All right, so hi again. Okay, let's get started. So uh, this is the other uh, last lecture uh, from me. So the last lecture is about ongoing and future observational projects for LIMAR permitters. And the aim of the other uh, this lecture uh, session is the, uh, to review the other uh, open questions in LIMAR permitters uh, briefly then move on to the other uh, to, uh, to the present and uh, next generation projects like the uh, large area surveys of the uh, head deck, silver VLT, and the next generation telescopes of J JWST, ELT, and so on. Okay, so this is the other again, the advanced notice. The question is, you know, identify the uh, the most interesting, important question of Lima of meters and brainstorm new observational projects with any existing facilities. Existing facilities, okay. Not dreaming, okay, all right. So, uh, so theorists, it's a very good opportunity to think about it. All right, so this, you know, I have talked many things, but uh, well, I just show the other uh, open questions I showed uh, in the other uh, my lectures. So I just pick up the, uh, some keywords Okay, so galaxy formation, well, high ionization parameter of LAEs, and uh, also the code accretion is pretty unknown, and large Lima for equivalent with origin is not very clear, and also the increasing Lima for escape fraction towards reddish to six is also not well understood. And population three, hot topic, but uh, still unclear. And, uh, extent, and then I uh, show the uh, cosmic reionization thing, you know, the for reionization history, extended to a sharp reionization is open question, and also the other, uh, you know, escaping Lyman alpha from the highly neutral IGM at register greater than eight is the other uh, also unknown. So what makes the, uh, what is the other uh, physical mechanism? And also lastly, uh, this morning I talked about the other, you know, ion ionizing sources, you know, faint AGN is the open question, uh, large parameter uncertainties for the other four major parameters of the other reionization, that's also unclear. And also the other similar thing happens not only for the galaxy free parameters, but also, you know, faint AGN parameters, including the other uh, Lyman alpha escape and X-ray emission for such faint AGN is also the other unclear thing that we have identified through the other discussion here. Okay, so uh, to resolve these questions, now we are, ex uh, you know, we are having the other or expecting uh, great instruments and telescopes. And I show, well, I want to uh, introduce the other, these, you know, new instruments and telescope in, uh, in, uh, in, in two categories. One is the other large area survey instruments, such like Subaru Hyper Spring Cam and Head Dex. So uh, these, you know, instruments allow you to accomplish high statistical accuracy uh, uh, observations. In other words, you can test the other, uh, 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 you know, theoretical models uh, having the, uh, this great accuracy of the statistics. Another great thing of the uh, the large area survey is to pinpoint rare important objects, such like you know, cold accretion, you know, candidate, and the population three. You know, having the great volume, so you can identify the uh, short time scale physical phenomena. And uh, okay, let's move on to the second one. Second one is the uh, other deep surveys, such like you know, uh, accomplished by the other uh, BLT Muse and next generation telescopes. So what you can do with the other uh, these you know instrument is the other uh, to uh, investigate the uh, un unidentified features uh, in the other uh, known objects or unknown objects. And also the uh, having the other uh, new new generation telescopes, you can explore higher redshift, you know, line of meters beyond redshift eight or so. All right. So let's start from the other uh, large area survey. And I'm from the other uh, Subaru community, so let me start from Subaru. Yes, so Subaru has the other, uh, well, you know, uh, is known for the other uh, uh, telescope having the other uh, wide field optical image. And recently we got the other uh, new uh, technology, uh, which is the other uh, new camera. Uh, Hyper Supreme Cam, which has the other uh, uh, field of view about uh, seven times larger than the uh, previous wide field camera of Subaru, uh, keeping the other uh, sensitivity high. 
and uh, we have started the other. Uh, <coughs> we, are, we, we are now conducting the uh, systemat systematic surveys, uh, wedding cake, you know, thing, thing three layer surveys of the other wide, you know, 1,400 square degree survey down to 26 magnitude and 30 square degree survey for the other uh, 27 magnitude and the other three and a half square degree survey uh, down to 28 magnitude in I band. So uh, this kind of the wedding cake, you know, uh, 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 survey is, uh, is ongoing and uh, we are spending in total of the uh, 300 nights in five years. The survey started the uh, uh, spring of 2014 and so far we have obtained about 20% uh, uh, of the data that we expected. And well, you know, several, you have already seen the other uh, several papers of the high Z galaxies uh, in the archive from the uh, the hypersprinkle survey. And uh, still, uh, there are no uh, Lyman alpha emitter studies uh, 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 shown in the archive papers. But uh, well, I just want to introduce uh, what's going on for the hypersprinkle LA studies. So this is the other uh, result of the other uh, redshift 6.6 Lyman alpha emitter candidates identified by the other uh, our hypersprinkle survey. Um, the goal of the other uh, hyperspremium Lyman alpha emitter survey is to target the other uh, uh, to to identify Lyman alpha emitters at redshift 2.2, 5.7, and 6.6 .6 in a uh, 30 square degree, and uh, also redshift 7.3 in a uh, three and a half square degree region. And we are expecting 20,000 Lyman alpha emitters and 1,000 Lyman alpha blobs down to the uh, reasonably deep, you know, uh, luminosity limit here. And now the current state is that uh, we, uh, you know, we are carrying out the, uh, the shadow wide survey first, and uh, we have taken the uh, about 20 square degree data for redshift 6.6 .6 Lyman alpha meters. You know, it's already you know about you know you know nearly order of magnitude wider area we have already covered, and uh, thanks to the data uh, we have identified rare interesting objects. This is the other narrowband magnitude as a function of the other uh, Lyman alpha equivalent radius. And these, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six objects are new objects together with the other previously known, you know, Lyman alpha blobs or population three candidates. So uh, we obviously found the other very high equivalent with, with object by the other our studies. And uh, one of the objects is the other uh, spectroscopically confirmed already and uh, shows the other nice asymmetry feature uh, that tells you that the other, you know, this you know, selection works very well. And so, uh, well, you know, many interesting, I, we are hoping that the interesting results are coming, so please stay tuned. And uh, the, also the other, this, you know, Lyman alpha emitter survey is the other, not only for identifying rare I interesting population, but also having the other great uh, statistics. So, uh, well, this shows the other kind of total area of the, you know, 30 square degree survey. And if you place everything on the, on, on, on the, on the box, then the other size, is about six, six degrees, which corresponds to the other uh, 0.9 co-moving gigaparsec on one side. So, uh, you know, using the other uh, narrowband technique, you can identify 20,000 Lyman alpha meters at ready six to seven. And the great thing is that, you know, you know in an in a area uh, of the other uh, cosmological scale. So it is very impressive. You can do the uh, cosmological scale survey uh, using narrowband and the hyper stream cam. And then the other, you get the other large am uh, amount of the data. And one of the other interesting, you know, uh, uh, study is the, uh, to calculate the other uh, uh, clustering of the other Lyman alpha emitters at redshift 6.6 .6 and 5.7, because the other uh, clustering of the other Lyman alpha emitters are the imprint of the other uh, neutral hydrogen distribution. Because the other, uh, if you have, if, if you are Lyman alpha emitters uh, residing in uh, large ionized bubbles, then the, uh, you have more chance to escape. Uh, towards the other uh, observers in the neutral IGM. So, uh, in other words, if you can uh, 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 accurately measure the clustering of Lyman alpha emitters, you can constrain on the other uh, neutral hydrogen fraction as well as the uh, possibly, you know, bubble top topology. So, uh, these, you know, red points are expected to result from the hyperspring cam together with the uh, previously obtained uh, uh, clustering result. So, uh, it, it gives you uh, the extremely good, you know, statistical result. 
And another interesting feature for the other, our uh, hyperspringian survey is to, uh, to look at the uh, diffuse Riemann alpha halos by the stacking using a lot of Riemann alpha, alpha emitters. As I said, you know, you know, the evolution of the, uh, the diffuse Riemann alpha uh, 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 halo scale length is about the, uh, the constant from register two, 2 to 6. But, uh, well, there's a you know, possible increase at register 6.6. .6, but, uh, well, it's quite uncertain. But uh, we can test this uh, with the uh, super hyperspringium data. And uh, you think that the other, well, super hyperspringium is just images. So, uh, well, you know, it's not extremely you know, complete. But uh, we are also expecting the other uh, spectrograph which is the other counterpart of su super hyper stream camp, but uh, the, the, the spectrograph is named prime focus spectrograph, PFS. So the PFS is the other uh, mounted on the prime focus of the Subaru, uh, uh, sharing the uh, wide field you know, camera corrector uh, with the other uh, hyper stream camp. So having the other uh, one square degree field of view, keeping the other uh, one square degree field of view, but uh, having the other uh, 2,000, 2,000 fibers covering the other uh, the other one, 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 one square degree field. And, uh, and this you know, PFS has the other three arms uh, of the other spectrograph, lines the blue, uh, red, and near infrared, and covering the 0.38 micron to the 1.26 micron. So uh, you know, having this thing, the, uh, the you can carry out the other you know, intensive, complete follow-up spectroscopic uh, observations for the Lyme uh, alpha emitters identified by the narrowband imaging of hyperspirium cam. So, uh, you know, one of the other interest, uh, interesting aspect of the PFS follow-up for the hyperspirium cam Lyme alpha emitter is the uh, that you can, you know, obtain the uh, Lyme alpha. So you can, of course, map out the uh, Lyme alpha distribution and also the other uh, you can stack you can obtain the other uh, line profile precisely uh, having the other uh, uh, by the, by other uh, st stacking method and if you carry out such a stacking uh, place by place they're in a different place then the other uh, you would expect the other uh, different you know uh, line profiles that would be the other uh, indicator of the other uh, cosmic reionization and then i move on to the other uh, head decks so head decks it, uh, stands for the uh, hobby every telescope uh, dark energy experiment and uh, as you know, the Hobby Avery Telescope is the, uh, the 10 meter class telescope, and you, pu you put the, uh, the new uh, fiber, uh, in sorry, integrate field you know, unit spectrograph named the, uh, the BIRES. So the BIRES is the, uh, the very interesting uh, uh, instrument, as you know. Uh, you know, there are you know, 78 integral field units, and one of the, uh, the integral field unit have the uh, 448 fibers. So on the focal plane, in total, you have the uh, 35,000 fibers. So, the, uh, the, so having this you know, large number of the fibers, you can, you know, how do you say, carry out the uh, three-dimensional you know, uh, spectroscopic imaging survey for the uh, 434 square degrees. And you, uh, you expect the other uh, 0.8 million diameter of meter that reaches two to four down to the uh, reasonably deep uh, flux limit. And uh, the goals of the other uh, you know, head decks is, as you know, major goal is the uh, dark energy, you know, for the uh, bar barium acoustic oscillations using Lyme alpha emitter, the probe of the other uh, structure of the universe. But, uh, well, for us, we are very interested in the other uh, Lyme alpha emitter evolution and environment and accurate, you know, luminosity functions so the bright end and, well, many areas of the uh, Lyme alpha emitter studies can be completed. And one of the other interesting feature, uh, you know, uh, uh, study that I think is the other, you know, to investigate the other uh, connection between the other uh, H1 distribution and Lyman alpha emitters. Well, of course, the uh, sensitivity of the uh, head decks is not very good. But if you combine the other uh, known quasars, long quasars, and also the uh, new head decks quasars, uh, you you can identify the other, you know, H1 distribution by the other uh, absorption feature, such carried out by the other KGV 2014. But the different thing for the other head, the other this kind of study uh, with head decks is that you can cover a large volume of the sky, 
so uh, which is very complementary to the other uh, ongoing efforts of the other, uh, you know, KGD and, uh, you know, X Prochaska. So, uh, you know, you can work on the other uh, large scale structures, also it's a coarse, you know, mapping of the uh, H1, and you have the other uh, three dimensional distribution of the Lyman alpha emitters, and you can study, you know, like the other uh, where galaxies Lyman alpha emitters uh, uh, form uh, in the other uh, large scale structures. So uh, this is uh, one of the uh, early results, not using the uh, headdex data, but uh, still you can do this kind of interesting uh, uh, study. So, uh, so you can correlate between the alignment uh, alphameters and the large scale structures uh, using the, uh, the, these new techniques. And another interesting, you know, third, uh, you know, uh, interesting, uh, important instrument is, the, as, as you know, VLT Muse. Um, you know, VLT Muse is uh, a wonderful in instrument. Uh, which is the other uh, integral field spectrograph covering the other uh, one square arc minute, you know, completely, and covering the other uh, 0.7 to 0.93 uh, micron, uh, having the other uh, uh, reasonably good uh, spectral resolution. And as you know, as many of you know, the other, uh, you know, the first, you know, uh, MUSE survey data spending a 27 hour integration in the other uh, Hubble Deep Field South. You know, the Bacon et al. paper shows here a nice plot. And the bottom line is that, you know, you can identify so many, you know, line emitters uh, uh, using the other uh, muse, having the great sensitivity. And, uh, you know, this shows the other uh, um, continuum magnitude as a function of the other uh, spectroscopically confirmed redshift. And the uh, blue points show the other uh, non spec Z objects. And now the other, by the, this MUSE program, you have identified about the order of magnitude larger spectroscopically confirmed uh, objects up to redshift six. And also, uh, interesting thing is that, you know, there is the uh, deep Hubble imaging in HDF's house uh, down to 29.5, but, uh, you know, uh, there are 26, you know, Lyman alpha emitters which have no optical counterparts. So, uh, you know, even you can, you can get the, uh, the very faint objects, even ha deep Hubble imaging, cannot identify. So it is very interesting. So, and uh, well, according to the other, you know, and they are now carrying out the, uh, the you know, shallow survey and the medium deep survey and deep field surveys. And uh, they are now targeting the other uh, very faint uh, Lima alpha emitters, you know, uh, touching around the 10 to the 14th or 10 to the 41st first of the other uh, Lima of luminosity. And so, uh, so, you know, very interesting results are expect to be ex expected. And also the other, I want to the other add, you know, uh, important thing is uh, important instrument, which is the other uh, Keck cosmic wave imager. And uh, so this, you know, the Ke new Keck imager is the kind of the other uh, counterpart of the uh, VLT Muse. And uh, the great thing is of the other, uh, you know, Keck instrument is having the other, you know, sensitivity very high and also the other spectral coverage uh, can extend below 0.47 that do, that, that, you know, VLT Muse doesn't cover. And this regime is very important for the other, you know, looking at the other diffuse Lyman alpha, you know, emission for the other relatively low Z. So allows you the other more sensitivity for the other, uh, uh, surface, low surface brightness, you know, Lyman alpha emitters. And uh, of course, you have the other uh, uh, cosmic uh, surface brightness dimming, so a low Z really helps. So I'm very much expecting the other uh, good results from Keck, uh, you know, uh, CWI. Okay, so uh, you have seen the other, you know, well, three major instruments for the other Lyman alpha emitter studies. And now you have who? with the, uh, a lot of information. So I want to, you know, sort it out with this diagram. This diagram shows the, uh, the you know, detection limit of the, or, or the, the, the luminosity coverage of the instrument as a function of the redshift. And if you plot the other uh, super hypersprinkum PFS, you know, instrument, you know, luminosity coverage and the redshift coverage, then you, you find this. And for head decks, redshift two to four and uh, relatively uh, shallow, but a large area, and the uh, MUSE covers here. It looks pretty complementary each other, and uh, I'm pretty happy to see this. And of course, you know, there's another important, how to say, 
physical parameter, you know, survey volume or area, it's hidden, but uh, of course, you know, <laughs> you need another, another, you know, the axis to, you know, show that. But, uh, well, you know, these three uh, uh, instruments, you know, really, you know, in, in, the, in the coming few years, uh, you know, uh, uh, opening new physical parameter space, space and uh, probably you can get the conclusive studies for the Lima meters at which two to seven, uh, having the uh, great statistical accuracy and, uh, you know, and you expect the uh, new unknown Lima for population or physical mechanisms, uh, probably. So then, yes, up to red shift seven, it's good. But uh, what about the uh, higher red shift? Yes, there are some examples of the other detection uh, reports of the other register eight to nine line of meters, so uh, we should work on it. And this is the other pretty famous, you know, discovery year, highest redshift object for quasar, galaxy, GRBs, and as you can see, the other galaxies are touching around redshift uh, eight or nine uh, for the uh, line emitters. And uh, well, you know, still, I think the other, a lot of efforts are, are made uh, using the other HST and Keck MOSFIRE spectroscopy. And, uh, but uh, probably, you know, we are now closely reaching the other uh, limit of the, you know, observations. So maybe, you know, you want to push more about the other LIMA alpha emitters. And, uh, you know, this, you know, register 8, 9 regime is the heart of the reionization. It is very important. So, oops. Then the other, of course, you, you have the other new technology, new telescopes uh, having the other great uh, aperture size. And uh, like the other one is the other JWST. And, uh, you know, it's coming as yeah, the launch date is the other, you know, about two and a half years later. And also the other extremely large telescopes of so the three telescopes are coming uh, sometime the middle of 2020s. And, uh, well, especially JWST is coming uh, early, so I want to the other focus on the, the expect, expectations for the other JWST observations. Well, the one of the other key question is the population three thing. And uh, JWST really helps for such a population three identification. Well, you know, one of the other, you know, the powerful, I, as I introduced in the, my lecture, the, uh, the powerful, uh, you know, diagram uh, for the other uh, population three is the, uh, this, you know, ionizing photon, you know, ratio of the uh, helium two, uh, helium plus and hydrogen. So as a function of the other uh, metallicity. And, uh, well, probably we, we have some, you know, helium two emission, uh, from the ground, but, uh, you cannot get the other uh, Bauma, Bauma lines that is necessary to estimate the other, uh, uh, this, you know, denominator of, uh, or the hydrogen ionizing photons. So, uh, it is great if you have the JWST from the other uh, space and to measure the other, uh, you know, uh, H beta or H alpha and then to derive the other, uh, this one. Then that is the uh, definite, you know, how to say testing for the other, uh, 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 population three. Because yeah, previously, as you see, the CL7 PLG is coming around here. That is very high, but, uh, you know, you use the other uh, for hydrogen ionizing photons from the other uh, Lima for fluxes that have the other uh, large escape fraction uncertainty. So, uh, this, you know, Bama break, you know, flux measurements are very useful. And, uh, well, from, you know, you, you can carry out the follow up spectroscopy, uh, uh for the other uh, known helium two emitters, uh, high Z emitters with JWST, and also the other, well, JWST can be the other surveyors of the other high Z Lima alpha meters. And one of the great thing is the other, you know, uh, J, uh, you know Canadian uh, uh, contribution of the JWST instrument, near infrared image uh, and sit spectroscope, spectrograph uh, in, uh, uh, installed in the other guide camera. So uh, using the wide field spectroscopy mode, you know, you have the other uh, uh, sweet spec uh, grism spectra covering the other one to two and a half micron with a spectral resolution of 150 and, uh, well, with a reasonably uh, large area of the, the, the coverage. And the simulation, this shows the other such a simulation for the JWC instrument. And if you carry out the other uh, uh, deep, you know, spectroscopy in the other uh, massive MAX cluster, 
you know, magnification helps to identify, uh, helps you to identify the other uh, high Z line of meters at register 5 to 15. And uh, this is the expected spectra and uh, at register 9.3 showing, I don't know, the other Lyman, nice Lyman alpha feature here. And uh, of course, you know, the, one of the other important question is that where, you know, what epoch the uh, Lyman alpha disappears. So that really helps us to understand the other uh, ionized bubbles and uh, the other uh, peculiar motions uh, of the other uh, galaxies that register around 9 or 10. So the, lastly, the other uh, 21 centimeter observations are also in interesting uh, for understanding the other uh, cosmic reionization. Well, you know, of course, SKA is the other, uh, you know, uh, how to say, is the more biggest, you know, project for the uh, such a 21 centimeter observations. But even before the uh, SKA comes, you know, there is the other, another promising uh, project, uh, which is named the Hydrogen Epoch Reionization Array, or HERA project. So uh, HERA project is not as big as the other SKA, but, uh, well, it, it, it's it has the other, you know, new technology uh, uh, to ha having the, uh, the redundant baselines uh, to allow that you allow you to the other, uh, have the other uh, redundant calibration and uh, allowing the other, uh, you know, uh, foreground, con com uh, foreground, you know, contribution uh, much lower than the other uh, present, you know, MWA or paper experiments. And they are expecting the other, uh, uh, to detect 21 centimeter power spectrum uh, with a signal to noise ratio of the 20 from the other uh, neutral hydrogen at register 9. So that is exciting. So it, once you get the other uh, neutral hydrogen distribution and you also have the other uh, galaxy distribution from the other uh, optical studies, then you know, you know, if you carry out the other uh, uh, such observations on the same sky, then you will you know, I identify the relation between the other uh, ionizers of the galaxies and the uh, bubbles here. And you expect the other uh, anti-correlation between 21 centimeter distribution and galaxies if galaxies are real, you know, uh, major reionizers. And, uh, you know, Adam Litz, uh, several years ago, uh, uh, carried out the other uh, sh numerical simulations and predicting that the other, uh, well, such an you know, anti-correlation can be clearly seen and you can constrain on the other, uh, you know, how to say, the, such a relation between the other uh, ionizers and 21 centimeter, uh, 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 I mean, the ionized bubbles. Okay, so I come back to the other, uh, you know, the first slide, and I said, you know, large area surveys, important, deep observations, important. Yes, these, you know, new instruments really help us to push the other Lima alpha emitter study, your observations, very good. But, uh, well, I also want you to, uh, especially to young uh, people, and I want to encourage young people to try existing the uh, instruments, but uh, new modes of the observations. Well, something new is there. Well, for example, look at the other uh, successful previous, you know, observations. For example, well, I showed the other uh, Matt Hayes result. You know, what he did is the uh, targeting the other, uh, well, uh, 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 targeting the uh, redshift 3.1 Lima alpha blob using the other uh, VLT force instrument using the other uh, existing uh, polarization mode, and then successfully identified the other uh, polarization. So, uh, well, you know, you could, you could do, uh, you know, if you, you know, just notify this technique. And also another in interesting thing is that, you know, variables, as you, you saw in the Jeff Cookie's result, you know, what he did is, he had ta you know, just identify, you know, the variables of the redshift two to four LBGs and LAEs in continuum, and uh, to identify supernovae, you know, type 2N supernovae. So uh, I, when I heard about his idea first, <laughs> I was so surprised and I, I thought it's impossible, but he successfully identified, you know, redshift two to four, you know, uh, out of luminous, you know, you know, supernovae by this technique. So, uh, well, please think about the, uh, something new, uh, even with the existing, the other uh, 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 instrument. 
OK, so the summary of the other, this lecture is I showed the other open questions. Uh, we don't have time, so I don't repeat it. And then I moved on the other ongoing and future projects, such like HeadDeck, Subaru, VLT, and next generation uh, large telescopes. So the other, this is the last discussion, the presentation section. And uh, so, as I said, you, know, you have already seen the, uh, the, a lot of Lima for emission you know, uh, results. And the question is the other, please identify the other most interesting, important question of Lyman of Meters and the brainstorm new uh, observational projects with any existing facilities. Okay, so please go ahead. This is the last discussion, so please identify some, some, somebody new again. Okay, it's time. This is the other closing time. Yes, all right. So, any volunteers? Well, I hear a lot of the other interesting things like GLBs or, you know, so many new, you know, words that I didn't much, you know, talked about. So, are there anyone who can volunteer for us? <laughs> I have a very nice idea around here, but uh, are you ready to introduce or? Well, what about, yes, hmm, maybe too good idea to introduce to everybody. <laughs> oh, yes, please. Okay, so we were thinking about doing a lot of more spectroscopic follow-up on of, um, some of the Lyme and alpha emitters to figure out what the physical properties of these Lyman alpha emitters are. So if you find one of these, if you find um, a Lyman alpha emitter, that you know what's going on there. And we were thinking that you need like, um, you could use Muse for it, for example, to get spectra. So what's the sample of the other your target? Oh, head text objects would be wonderful. <laughs> okay. yeah. There you go. That's a sample. <laughs> so what is a major, major aspect or feature you want to identify? Palmer lines. Palmer lines. Palmer lines. Okay. So anything else? You? Oh, yes. Okay. Hi, I'm Saurabh from University of Minnesota. Uh, so today morning we talked about the clumping factor uh, for finding out the reionization. So like, I was thinking like maybe uh, we can look at the Lyman alpha emitters far away and look at their environment. And from there we can try to, like we know that clumping factor just from the cosmological simulations, right? And if we can find out, like look at the far away galaxies and look at like how look at their environment and trying to see uh, from there like finding out the constant on how that clumping factor evolves as a function of redshift. From there you can get an idea of reionization. Yeah. So and uh, what kind of the targets do you observe to to carry out this? You know, like look at the big ionizing bubbles in the high Redshift, like look at laminar parameters, and there like, we talked about something like circumgalactic medium of of those galaxies. You mean Lyman alpha halos? Yeah. And how you can determine the uh, the clumping factor again using the other uh, Lyman alpha halo? Like find out how much how much neutral hydrogen you have and how much is ionized and from there that you can find out, okay. And look at like how much is passing through the line of sight. Mm. I mean, clumping is just like, it's related to like, uh, as I understand clumping means like, okay, around the galaxy you have uh, different, different, uh, different, different bubbles and like how much line, how much can, can it pass through you? Mm. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's interesting. So while uh, you try to identify a lot of, how to say, uh, uh, dumping ring absorption, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and okay. uh, also the, how to say, the other uh, transparent uh, okay. you know, regime. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. That's interesting. All right, so anything else? I think this is the last, <laughs> I think. Last, last volunteer. Oh, yes. We just had a general question about how large does one need to go in order to, that cosmic variance is no longer an issue. When do you, when do you probe the entire universe effectively? How large a, a survey is that? I assume, I'm used to painting the sky with a two square arc minute or four square arc minute field of view, but in 1400 square degrees, does that give you over densities on 10 orders of magnitude or you showed a figure with uh, one that was uh, went from over densities of minus one to 1.5 or so roughly for H the HSC, but it, was that the three and a half degree survey? Or if you go to 14, how how big do you need to go? And can you then the question is, can you look at the clustering of Lyman, Lyman alpha emitters on on all scales throughout the universe? Do you find Lyman alpha emitters in voids? Do you find them only in uh, over the most over dense regions, truly over dense regions in the universe? And we just it was an, a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, yeah. Actually, the, in my in my in my lecture, I uh, didn't touch the other, uh, you know, uh, field to field variance or cosmic variance thing. So uh, I think this is important. But uh, well, most of the other, uh, you know, these you know next generation surveys are targeting the uh, some independent, you know, survey areas. So of course you need to uh, say if you have, you know, fourteen hundred square degree sky, then the other well you can map up the other uh, over densities to the other uh, voids. And that is great, um, but uh, well, it's correlated. And the recent, you know, survey designs, for example, ha super hyper spring cam has the, uh, the many patches of the sky distributed over the, you know, the many right ascension. So uh, that really helps to kill, first of all, the other uh, field to field variance or uh, field to field variance. And the next question is that: so, what's the general properties of the galaxies in the filaments or the over density and void? And especially very interesting questions that, where, you know, maybe in the near to the void region, you expect to have the more chance of the population three starburst. So uh, if you can map out the large scale structures was once using say you know absorption lines, and so on, then probably you know you'd identify you know metal poor population near the uh, around the void area, even though uh, it, it is the, uh, the low redshift. So I think the other, well, population three is a function of the density and redshift. So in this sense, you know, targeting void, you know, somehow if you identify voids, then I think that's very exciting. Okay, all right, so uh, let's, okay, so let's wrap up. So, okay, let, first of all, let's thank to the other volunteered people you know, in the past two and a half days. <laughs> All right, so uh, spending the other uh, rest of three minutes, I, uh, you know, conclude my uh, lecture. You know, just one slide for the summary. Grand summary. So for the, uh, this series of the lectures, well, you know, I focused on the lime alpha emission in uh, emission, ah, Lyme alpha in emission, and especially Lyme alpha emitters, which are the other uh, metal poor high redshift uh, galaxies. So, especially in the observation aspects. And uh, I had the other seven, you know, you know, lecture topics. And, uh, to, you know, I just go through the other keywords to let you, re, you know, uh, re, let you remind. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, let, let you think about it. So the, uh, the first the uh, introduction, well, Lyman Alpha is important for the uh, low mass galaxy studies and also re good, good for the, uh, the reionization. That's why I have the uh, galaxy formation, you know, lectures and cosmic reionization lectures. And also the other, uh, we identify that, you know, H1 probe, this can be the uh, great H1 probe using the scattered light, like Lyman Alpha blobs or, you know, Lyman Alpha halos. And galaxy formation one, we looked at the other very basic theoretical uh, features like the uh, structure formation and the dark, mat dark matter halo formation that is well understood from the other uh, uh, models. 
And the, but uh, you know, the large you know, challenge is yeah, the barium physics for the other uh, stars. It is very difficult. And also the, uh, there are five major sources of the, uh, the Lyman alpha emission line. And the galaxy formation too, I show the other many properties, observational properties of the Lyman alpha emitters, like stellar population, luminosity function evolution, morphology, IS, ISM state, IGM, and hosting halos. And the galaxy formation three, you, you know, it was a kind of very difficult thing. You know, I touched the other, say, you know, population three, escape fraction, Lyman alpha escape fraction evolution, and uh, the physical origin of the Lyman alpha uh, emission halos. But uh, well, not uh, most of them have not been, you know, the resolved issue. So uh, many, you know, unknown factors, uh, you know, were, you know, uh, introduced here. And then cosmic reionization. I talked about the uh, neutral hydrogen uh, fraction evolution. And one of the other uh, challenge, challenge is the other, uh, you know, the reionization, extended our sharp reionization history. And uh, to this morning, I talked about the, uh, the reionizing sources, you know, quasars, faint AGN, and galaxy. And uh, there are four unknown parameters. And also the other, uh, well, there are many, you know, unknown parameters, not only in the other uh, galaxies, but also faint AGN. This is identified through the other, uh, our discussion. Okay, and this lecture, uh, you know, we discussed about the uh, next generation uh, observations with Subaru VLT hat, and also the other uh, next large telescopes, uh, which helps you to uh, understand Lyman alpha emitters. So this is a summary, and uh, well, you know, this is the other uh, well end of the other uh, my eight lectures, and I really appreciate the other uh, you are, you know, wonderful attitudes to listening these lectures, these lectures, and also the other, your active uh, uh, discussion. And the other, I really, the other, I'm really hoping that the other, you know, these lecture series help you understand this field and also the other uh, helpful for, for the other, your ongoing studies uh, to be proceeded. And also the other, it may, uh, you know, that, that, and also the hoping uh, to, for you to start the other new uh, observational or theoretical studies are uh, stimulated by the other, this lec these lectures and also the other discussions. So the other, this is the other last slide. Uh, thank you very much for the other everybody. And I, I'm leaving here uh, this evening, but uh, well, you have the other two and a half days here, nice place here. So uh, please enjoy the other snow mountains and Lyman Alpha. Thank you. Okay, so... Oops.